What has happened to me? The Testimony of a Uyghur Woman in Japan By Tomomi Shimizu I am a 36-year-old Uyghur. I came to Japan to study, got naturalized, and became a Japanese citizen in 2018. While working as an interpreter, I raised a child. I wanted to show my kid to my parents who live in our hometown one day. But it would never come true. Since Uyghur conversations are watched, I refrained from contacting my family. Their SNS posts were the only way I could make sure they were safe. However, in 2017, my brother stopped updating. After due consideration, I contacted my parents. They told me that he was taken to study six months ago. This means he was brought into a concentration camp. My brother was 20 years old at the time. His dream was to someday go to Japan to study automobile maintenance and run a factory in Uyghur. He was taken away just because he was gathering with his friends. My brother was young and healthy. In 2018, authorities blocked Oromchi railway station for 40 days and took a large number of Uyghur men inland on one-way trains. He might have been on it. He might be facing a cruel fate. I find myself thinking it. Since the late 1990s, we have heard many stories about missing children in rural areas. I saw the news that three or four Uyghur kids were found in bags in the back of a Chinese car. Some sold their riches such as sheep, and went inland in search of their children. At the time of the 2008 Olympics, surveillance cameras were set up everywhere, even in rural areas, to keep law and order. But the number of missing children has not decreased at all. For some reason, there were very few cases of abduction on the camera, and the police did not investigate. Parents desperately posted information about their missing children on social media and looked for them, but even that was later repressed. Uyghur doctor Anwar Tohudi examined the body of a missing child for a few months and discovered that one of his kidneys had disappeared. Some children have been found dead with no eyeballs or organs. In urban areas, there are hospitals specialized in organ transplantation. They accept transplant tourists from abroad. In fact, one major Chinese airline announced that it had carried 500 organs in a single year. There is an ad for a hospital specializing in halal organs, the organs without the consumption of alcohol and pork. Most Uyghurs don't eat pork or alcohol because of our religion. That's why I'm so worried. In 2018, I made a testimony video to save my brother. Because of this video, I was charged with subversion of the state, and my mother and sister were interrogated on my behalf as a joint responsibility. After that, all contact with my family was completely cut off. I may have been wrong, my family may be in trouble because of me. I am tormented by such thoughts. But someone has to say what our people are going through. The fact that Uyghurs are not treated as human beings. For example, if a woman gives birth to two or more children, or if she gets pregnant again within three years, she will be forced to abort even in the last month. All women up to the age of 50 are tested and treated for contraception, and are forced to undergo sterilization without anesthesia at their own expense. Some women had massive bleeding during operations. Why would they do anything like that? Most young Uyghur men are taken to camps. On the other hand, in the remaining Uyghur homes, Han people live together as relatives and sleep together. Uyghurs live in hell. Even in Japan, which is supposedly safe, no one feels alive. We have your luggage, come to the embassy to pick it up. There is a case with the Shanghai police. If you do not reply, you will be charged with a felony. Calls like this come to my child's cell phone every once in a while. There are times when silent calls and anonymous calls come in every minute. I've been in Japan for 15 years. 
Present-day Japan is similar to Uyghur of the past. Japanese people are very kind. This is the land of Uyghurs. We leave this to you. We just work together. We'll leave as soon as you become rich. A lot of friendly and beautiful things were said to the officials, and they believed them. However, they were all lies and traps for aggression. Many Han people kept coming into our land. Their population has become about the same as that of Uyghurs. Most of the good jobs were taken by Han Chinese. They changed their attitude. It was already too late by then. By the time the population reverses, no matter how much we say the right thing, it won't get through. Saying the right thing makes you a criminal. Please don't make this peaceful Japan like Uyghur. It's not just us, the Uyghurs, who say that, but the Mongols, the Tibetans, the Hong Kongers, and all those who have lost their homeland in a similar situation. Please don't call us Uyghur ethnic group. We are not an ethnic minority. By calling us Uyghur ethnic group, the Chinese Communist Party intends to portray us as an ethnic minority. We are Uyghurs. And now the global commodity factories are in China. From high brands to daily necessities. Products sold at ridiculously low prices. Many Uyghurs were brought almost forcibly and often work in harsh conditions like slaves. I never buy Chinese products. Why is it that Uyghurs suffer such misery? All because the Uyghurs are a colony under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. I think the only way to end this misery is to rebuild the country. Dear members of Japanese companies. Dear members of companies around the world. If someday we can rebuild our homeland, East Turkestan, would you please build a company or a factory in Uyghur at that time? Uyghurs are earnest, hard-working people. Your consideration is highly appreciated. I didn't even know that my father passed away. Sick mother, brother, sister, brother Asker in the camp. I still haven't heard from any of them. I hereby testify. My name is Gulistan Aziz. Please. Please find out about the Uyghurs. I hope that you will act to protect your country and the future by learning about us.